Hey, Dave the Butterfly Guy here, standing out in my butterfly habitat in my backyard. I became intrigued in butterflies when I heard about the plight of the monarch butterfly. And I wanted to create some habitat to help restore some of the numbers the monarchs had 10, 20 years ago. But as I've been in my garden, I've become really intrigued with other butterflies, especially the large ones, the swallowtails. So in Minnesota, there might be five different swallowtails that uh, come up to Minnesota, the spice bush, the black swallowtail, or the zebra swallowtail. So there's also two other ones that I've been able to tape this summer in my garden that I'm really excited to share with you. They're large, they can have wingspans up to six inches, and I have some great video of it. I'm hoping you enjoy my discussion about swallowtail butterflies on my video today. So the monarch gets a lot of attention, but I have fallen in love with these magnificent butterflies. This one's the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. It's a big butterfly. It's three and a half to five and a half inch wingspans. You can see the stripes on the wings that remind you of tiger stripes. It's truly a, a magnificent butterfly. One of the ways you can tell the difference between the male and the female tiger swallowtail is by this iridescent blue on the bottom part of the wings. The female has this blue where the males is just the yellow and the black. Tiger swallowtails are often seen flying high over deciduous woods, forests, or along streams. They love residential gardens. You can see them in parks or in orchards. They're often seen on a lot of variety of flowers. I seem to always find them on my zinnias or on my purple cone flowers. So I was really excited to capture this eastern tiger swallowtail buzzing around in my front yard on the lilac tree I have there. You can see it's enjoying the nectar from the flowering lilacs. This tiger swallowtail spent a good part of the afternoon just buzzing around from branch to branch. So I felt really fortunate to be able to have captured it on film. The life cycle of the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail, it starts with the egg, which will be around for maybe up to 10 days. And then the egg will turn into a caterpillar, which will be around for three to four weeks. That caterpillar will turn into a chrysalis. The chrysalis will hang for 10 to 20 days before it turns into a butterfly. And then the butterfly only lasts for six to 14 days. So these butterflies, they have a short life. So how can you attract them? What kind of host plants do they like? Well, they like cottonwood trees, ash trees, birch, cherry, and even willow trees. And then when they become a butterfly, what types of flowering nectar plants do they like? They're attracted to milkweed, thistle, and, and certainly, as I mentioned earlier, the purple coneflower and zinnias. So I love the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail, but the other great swallowtail I see in my garden in Minnesota is the Giant Swallowtail. And this butterfly is even more spectacular. It's the largest butterfly in North America with a wingspan of four to six inches. So even bigger than the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. The range of the Giant Swallowtail isn't as broad as the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail although you'll see it across much of the eastern United States. And in Minnesota, it will maybe come as far north as central Minnesota. You can find the giant swallowtail in woodland areas and also in residential gardens. Host plants include the prickly ash, citrus trees like the wild lime, or Hercules club, which is known as the devil's walking stick. And then in terms of nectaring flowers that they like, they love milkweed, they like lantana, they like butterfly bush, and zinnias, and then I have also found them on my flax plants. Like the eastern tiger swallowtail, the giant swallowtail has four phases to its life cycle. The egg, which again is only four to ten days. Then it turns into the caterpillar, which could be three to four weeks as a caterpillar. 
and then it forms into its chrysalis. That can be around 15 days, and then it becomes a butterfly. And again, the lifespan of a butterfly for the giant swallowtail is oftentimes only about 14 days. And then that whole life cycle starts over again where they lay eggs and it goes on and on and on. The other thing I find fascinating about the giant swallowtail is its rapid wing beat. You can see it always is flapping its wing. I don't see that with the eastern tiger swallowtail or the monarch butterfly. But one of the ways I easily identify the giant swallowtail from a distance is I can see that rapid action uh, of its wings in the garden. It means it's time to go check them out. So I hope you're intrigued with what I shared with you about the swallowtail butterflies, especially that eastern tiger swallowtail, and then the large giant swallowtail. So that's all I have today. It's Dave the Butterfly Guy signing out. Have a great day.